Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord today, for he is good. Amen. We serve a good God who is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Praise his name. How many come ready to praise the Lord? Come expecting God to do something big in your life. Come on, sing. your strength this morning. We stand and lift up our hands in the presence of an almighty God. Amen. Well, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and we worship our Abba Father. How holy, how righteousness, how wonderful, how great, how marvelous he is. I will boast on the Lord this morning for he is my God and he has done great things.
you to worship God in your very own way. Just tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much he means to you. We bless your name, Jesus. Let me hear you this morning. Worship and praise your father. It is Father's Day and he is your father, right? He is worthy of our praise today. We magnify your name, Jesus. There's no one greater than you, God.
prayed and I prayed and to feel my faith wane when I cried my last tear and felt crushed by the pain in a sweet tender way he's been there my God is faithful when my friends have gone on and I'm still left with grief when I'm weak and I'm shaking like an insecure leaf Sunday, June 23rd, and you still have time to pre-register so you can snag one of these awesome free t-shirts here at the table by the bookstore. We're also selling CDs with all of the really cool Power Up Camp music on them for $5. So don't miss out. Sign up now for kids entering kindergarten through sixth grade and grab a t-shirt. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here at Life Change Church. And stay connected with us online at lcchurch.tv, on our Facebook page, or download our app on your smartphone or your mobile device. Ushers, take your place. 
please, and let's receive the morning tithe and offering. We're thankful for each one that uh, faithfully gives and supports the work of God here out of this local body. We, we know that God will truly bless you as you faithfully give. Father, <clears throat> I pray that you'll bless this offering in Christ's name. Amen. I can't take a heart that's broken, make it over again, but I know a man who can. I can't take a soul that sins it, wash it wide. As the snow, but I knew a man who can. Some call him a savior, the
Aren't you glad you know that man this morning? His name is Jesus. I want to, I want to uh, wish every father here, every, every man, a wonderful, wonderful, happy Father's Day. I hope and pray that this is a great day for you. I hope that your wife and family roll out the red carpet, sprinkle it with rose petals, <laughs> anoint your head and ear and feet with oil. Already in place, as soon as you sit in your recliner, they'll go ahead and pull the arm for you. Have a Coke or a Pepsi or whatever it is you want to drink. Lay back, feed you grapes. Fan you with fans. I can really feel something here happening right now. You know what I feel happening? Nothing. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I hope that it's a great day for you and your family. Celebrate your father. My daddy died when I was 13. That's been 35 years ago. There's still very rarely a day go by that I don't think about him and miss him. So embrace your daddy while you have him and love on him because one of these days he's going to go on to the next world. And uh, so you have a great day with your, with your family today. I want you to turn in your Bible to Isaiah chapter 10. Isaiah chapter 10. And we're going to begin reading at verse 20. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 10. In verse 20, <clears throat> I'm going to have you stand, please. Just turn to your neighbor and say, if you only knew how much I loved you. <laughs> turn back and say, just how much is that? <clears throat> the prophet Isaiah Prophet Isaiah prophesying hundreds and thousands of years ago says these words in his writing of chapter 10, beginning at verse 20. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of hosts, my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee after the manner of Egypt. For yet a very little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him, according to the slaughter of Midian, at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so, so shall he lift up after the manner of Egypt, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I like that. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing and the yoke shall be destroyed i feel the anointing already i said the yoke shall be destroyed because 
of the anointing. I believe in that, don't you? Father, I thank you and I praise you for this time that we've gathered in your house to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, that in song, the lifting of hands, the praise of your people, we have made the attempt to worship you in spirit. We come to truth. And as we unfold your word, I pray that it will open up to us like the petals of the flower. And the fragrance will fill our heart and fill our mind to where we know that through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you have spoken clearly to us this day. I pray, Lord, that it would find lodging in every mind, in every heart. All those that have gathered, all those online, those that will listen this week, that it would not return void, but that your word would fulfill the purpose this day. I thank you that every plan, purpose, and scheme of the devil is defeated, and your name is glorified, and we praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. The great prophet Isaiah prophesying thousands of years ago would peer into the distant prophetic future and make this powerful statement, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing is Christ. For the name Christ means by its very virtue, the anointed one. Christ, the anointed one. Then there is his church, the body of Christ, that he has by the Holy Spirit anointed for his purpose. Before I go any farther, let me say this morning, it is my great desire, the yearning and burning of my heart, that not only as I preach, but that as you are here each and every Sunday, that there would be a powerful, and strong anointing from heaven. You and I need to be reminded we cannot preach, we cannot sing, we cannot shout, we cannot testify, and certainly without the anointing, what we go through on Sunday morning is some religious exercise or some mechanical machine put together by man. I'm not interested this morning in what man puts together. I want God to bow the heavens and come down in his strength and in his power, in his glory and in his might and touch our mind and touch our heart and touch our body and lift us and strengthen us and invigor us and empower us. I'm tired of dead preachers, preaching dead sermons to dead congregations. I want God to explode on the scene and with glory and with might and with power stir us and change us and challenge us and lift us and empower us. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Maybe you ain't never been around I want to tell you there's something God wants to do in this place this morning that will change your life forever. Christ, the anointed one, the church, the anointed ones for his purpose. You can go to church in most churches today in America, you'll never hear about the anointing yeah. and certainly never sense it. Yeah. Amen. Why, if the Holy Ghost showed up in most churches, they'd hand him a visitor's card today. Is anybody else here with me right now? Can I teach you how to have Holy Ghost church? Sometimes you got to say amen back to the preacher.
The word anoint means to smear or to rub with oil. To smear, rub, or pour out with oil. In the Old Testament, the prophet was anointed to speak as of the oracles of heaven that the anointing that rests upon him would, when he spoke, God would speak through him. The priest was anointed, rubbed, smeared with the oil. For his office was to make sacrifice on behalf of the people and their sin. And then the king was anointed. He was the one that would govern the people and lead them into battle to overthrow the enemies of God's people. Three offices, prophet, priest, and king, all of them, before they were a prophet, before they were a priest, before they were a king, were to be smeared, rubbed, anointed, poured on with a flask of oil, typical of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And I say again, and I don't want to play the same string too much, but I say again, God help the church that we get back to operating, flowing, ministering. As we are smeared, rubbed down, and poured over by the anointing of God. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ was anointed prophet, priest, and king. Remember when he was baptized of John? The word tells us when Christ came out of the water, there was a voice from heaven spoke. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. After the voice, the word tells us that in the similitude of a dove, yeah. the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus the man. And in that moment, God was saying, this is my son, and I now anoint him as the prophet, Amen. priest, and king. Yeah. He was prophet because he exploded on the scene and preached repent for the kingdom is at hand. Right. He was priest because he offered himself up on the cross right. as the supreme sacrifice for sin and the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. And he is king because one day it is not going to be long. The trumpet's going to sound and Christ will stretch his long Galilean leg across the white steed and he'll gallop down Hallelujah Avenue and across Amen Corner and through the eastern gate he'll come and he'll come back. Hair like wool, eyes like fire, feet like brass. And on his vestige we'll read King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want you to know this morning our King and our Lord is coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back in this earth. one, the prophet, the priest, and the soon returning king. And Isaiah would prophesy, stand on a mountain of revelation, gazing out into the prophetic history. He would, he would prophesy in chapter 10 of what was going to take place. And let me say that that which he prophesied of, we are now living in those days. The context and the backdrop of the scripture that I read in your hearing deals with the end times. We are living in the last days, church. Those of you that are watching online and will listen later online, I want you to hear this gospel preacher. We are living in the last days. 
Let me say the time to play church and try for a realm with God is not now. We are living in the last days. If there were ever a time you needed to get right with God, it is right now. If there were ever a time you needed to repent, it is right now. Don't hold back. Don't. We are living in the last days. We stand at the precipice. It was Isaiah that said there would be this Assyrian, he called him. You study this out and understand what he's talking about. He's talking about the introduction of the Antichrist. I don't know how much you know about end times, how much you know about the Bible, but I would encourage you to get into it and read it and find out. Because in the last days, there's going to be an introduction of the Antichrist. One that's going to step up on a world scene and become a great leader. And everyone's going to think he's the Christ because for a little while, he'll bring peace. But it's only for a little while. After that, he will rule and reign and try to destroy God's people, Israel. The Antichrist of which now we are living in a time when the spirit of the Antichrist is at an all-time high. We almost parallel the days of when the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, fueled in the religion of that day, nailed Jesus to a cross. That's where we are, the spirit of the Antichrist. Jesus is not popular. Christianity is not popular. Even in America that finds its root system in the Bible and the principles and precepts of God's Word, now Jesus is no longer popular. To be a Christian and have beliefs that are Judeo-Christian values, they are no longer popular. We are hated. We are despised. And Jesus said in the last days, they will deliver us up. We will be hated of all nations. All men will turn against those who put their faith in Christ. But I want to tell you this morning right now, no matter what the world does, no matter what they say, they can go against Christ and against Christianity. But I want to say this morning, I am proud, I'm not ashamed to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Stand over here with the Apostle Paul and say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto them that believe. I'm born again and proud of it. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm twice born, spirit baptized. My sins are under the blood.
stand at the precipice of the end of time, I believe right now, right now, the Antichrist is living and breathing in the earth. I don't know who he is. I don't know where he is. But I believe we're that close as the signs are unfolding before us. And Isaiah said, this Assyrian, this Antichrist, will lord over in bondage, yoke up and burden the people of God. He will put a yoke around the neck and a heavy burden upon the shoulder and as it were beat down with a heavy rod. The people of God. That's the end times. But listen to what he said would happen. I got a few minutes yet? I'm just on the introduction, folks. Get, stay with me. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away off their shoulders. And his yoke shall off be taken off their neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. What's going to happen? Jesus is going to come back and step onto the same world scene that the Antichrist has been ruling and and been a tyrant for three and a half years to seven years. He's going to step onto that scene and sit on the throne and make everything that's wrong right. All the darkness light. All the bad good. I don't know about you, that excites me. This is the hope of the believer. I said, this is the hope of the church. The hope of the church is not a new suit, new car, new house, and a big bank account. The hope of the church is that one day Jesus is going to come back and he's going to make all things right. Hallelujah. And set the world free. That's why the Bible says even nature is groaning and crying for that great day of release. the end times. Now you say, preacher, that's what he's going to do. But what about in the meantime? What about now? All right, everybody listen to me. I preached all that to get here. This is the sermon. Will you give me five minutes? Amen. Who give me five minutes? Just raise your hand. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I got all kinds of time. That's what he's going to do. What he's going to do on the world scene is what he's already done 2,000 years ago. Let me say it again. What he's going to do on the world scene is what he already did 2,000 years ago. John said it this way. He said that the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of Satan. He was manifest on the cross gave his life, hung between two worlds and two thieves, and shed his blood so that he could destroy, annihilate, the Bible says crush, the very head of Satan. The very first promise that was given in the Old Testament, when man fell and sin into the world, death and sickness come with it. You remember what happened? God looked at the devil. And he said, I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. You will bruise his heel, but he will crush your head. Do you understand this morning that the anointing, the Christ one, the anointed one, Christ, when he died on the cross, he literally by his heel crushed the head of Satan. He was bruised, but Satan was destroyed. Jesus went in the grave for three days. But it was only for three days. If you bruise your heel, you can recover. If you crush your head, you're never getting back up. Jesus was bruised, but he got back up. Satan was crushed. He ain't getting back up. Hallelujah. 
You say, what does that mean in my life? What that means in your life is uh, Jesus, when he hung on the cross uh, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, offered up the sacrifice uh, 2,000 years ago uh, when we put faith in him, uh, the yoke of sin on our neck, uh, the burden of condemnation on our shoulder, that which we've done in his sight, uh, he said that burden, that yoke, uh, that chain of sin, uh, I will free you of it. I'll Break up the yoke. I'll lift the heavy burden. I'll cleanse your heart. I'll free your soul. And this morning we can lift our hands and say, He set me free. Yes, He set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I glory bound my Jesus to see. Glory to God. He set me free. That means the drug addict can be set free. The alcoholic can be set free. The homosexual can be set free. The perverted can be set free. The liar can be set free. That sickness hanging on your body, you can be set free. The depression and doubt and worry and dread and anxiety that fills your mind and heart. This morning, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's here right now will set you free. I don't care what burden you're carrying today. Right, right, right. I had someone say to me a while back, they said, oh, preacher, pray for me. The devil's fighting. I said, yeah. And they said, I'm just praying that I can defeat the devil in my life. I said, listen, why would you want to try to defeat somebody that's already been whipped? He said, what do you mean? I said, he's already defeated. Right. You don't have to defeat someone that's already been that's defeated. Right. All you got to do is trace him back to that moment 2,000 years ago right. when Jesus crushed his head right. and remind him that one of these days the king of glory is going to come back and he's going to de dispower, take out of power the antichrist and bind him up and throw Satan in a bottomless pit for all eternity. Listen, he's already defeated. Why are you living in worry? Why are you walking in sickness? Why is your mind crippled? Why are your emotions the way they are? Why are you always living defeated? Why are you concerned about this and concerned about that? And the report from the doctor and the bills that are coming due and the sin that you can't seem to conquer. On and on and on I could go. Why are you living defeated when you have victory through the anointing of God? When you have victory through the anointing Jesus Christ. Why live defeated when you can live in victory? Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Praise God. Victory is mine. God told Satan, get thee behind. Today, victory is mine. Healing is mine. Healing is mine. God told Satan, get thee behind. Healing today is mine. I don't know what you need, but I want to tell you there's an anointing in this place right now. God, God, the anointed one is going to do a supernatural, powerful work in your mind, in your heart, and in your spirit. The anointed. Come on. Amen. The anointed breaks the yoke. See, what I'm trying to explain is the anointing broke it, breaks it, and will break it. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. I know one thing. I'm working a lot harder than you are. Come on. Anyone got another hanky or a beach towel or something? Goodness. The anointing broke, breaks, and will break. What do you need broken in your life today? I was five years old. Sunday morning service. My family and all we, my family and I, we always sat in the back. My mother always sat in the back pew. She was an old shouting saint. Oh, this morning, this preaching, she'd have been shouting all over this church. 
like you. I'm well, no better than you. She, she'd have been shouting all over this church. She was an old shouter. I can remember five years old standing on that back pew one Sunday morning. We were having a good service, and a fella walked in. A man walked in. When he did, this darkness filled the room. There was a coldness that came in the room. It felt, and the only thing I can explain is it felt like cold blades piercing your body. And I told him a little bit about this on Wednesday night, and I wanted to, wanted to get into it a little more this morning about this story that happened. That man, about halfway through, it was just an awful thing. And my pastor, he went up and started to address the spirit that was in that house. You listen to me. God is real and Satan is real. Regrettably, most churches in America, God don't go and Satan don't bother showing up either. Why would he? Hmm? That, That spirit was there. He began to address it. And when he did, he started to call it out. And that man let out a, a scream. It sounded like a thousand lions. He would seemingly wake the dead. And he jumped up out of the pew, and jumped over a pew into the aisle, and ran up. And we had in that church big wooden oak wooden altars, about 30 foot, two of them, 30 foot long. He grabbed one of them and threw it up in his, above his head and twisted around like a pretzel. Some of the saints went running toward him. Used to be a day we weren't scared of the devil. They went running up there. My pastor ran there. One of the ladies was little sister Ruth Wentz. She was four foot five of nothing. This little old 90 pound. But I want to tell you, she'd scare the devil. She had eyes. She'd get blessed and shout and dance all over the church. She had eyes like fire. She had just to carry on. She'd get to praying with you and shake your head until you thought you are you know, you're going to have shaking syndrome. I mean, she, the Lord had to protect you. She went running up there. She wasn't scared a bit. She went running up there. That man grabbed a hold of him. And then my pastor come down, and he looked at that man, and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of this man and set him free. And the devil that was in him came out and left the building. And when the devil left the building, that atmosphere completely changed from darkness to light. And there was a beautiful spirit, a sweet spirit that came in there. And I remember I was five years old. I saw this with my physical eye. You might think I'm crazy. I don't care what you think of me. I'm telling you what I saw with my physical eye standing on that little pew. I saw a cloud as it hovered over the people and just moved. And the glory of the Lord filled that church that morning. You know what this world needs? They need a church that will get the glory back. They need a people that will get the glory back. You You understand you can't get set free by being entertained. You're not going to get set free by check this, check that, fill in that blank and fill your head with some kind of principle for that week. You don't get set free by light shows and entertainment. You don't get set free on Sunday morning showtime. You get set free when the glory of God comes and the gospel is preached and the anointing breaks the yoke over your life. You hear me? Let me tell you something. You cannot be saved outside of the preaching of the gospel. You say, oh, I don't know about that. Let me prove it to you in the Bible. Can I do that real quick? Let me show you something. Corinthians, Corinthians 15. Do you have that on the screen? We'll just throw it up there. Corinthians 15. Let me read this to you real quick. Let me me find it. You got it? Yeah, 15.1 right there. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Verse 2. By which also ye are saved. If, everyone say if. If. You keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Next verse. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. Next verse. And that he was buried and, and that rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Now, verse 2. Go back to it. I want you to see it. He said, 
You will be saved if you keep in memory what was preached. If you don't put faith in what you heard that was preached, your faith is in vain. Isn't that what the scripture said? Everyone look at it. I said, everyone look at it. See there? You can't get saved outside of the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the Bible. You believe in vain if you put faith in anything else. It's a vain faith. And that man that morning got set free. By the way, that man's still serving God today. All these years later. I was five years old. I'm a lot older than five years now. That's been 33 years ago. He was a rough guy. When I say rough, he lived a, a life high in drugs, consumed them. He told me, he said, every morning I would lay out a tray of the pills, the powders, and the things that I was going to do. I don't know much about it, but he said I'd lay out a tray. That was my day. My whole day was planned around that tray. He didn't, he didn't plan his meals. He planned what drugs he was going to take when. He had a business, but it was only a front for his drug dealing. He was so high up and connected to things that he literally could call and a private jet would land, pick him up and take him wherever he wanted. Completely paid for. He had been in every kind of fight you can imagine, been in and out of prison, been shot, knifed. He had lived a life. That was my friend that I know. He told me that he wasn't scared of anything, but they moved into this little neighborhood, and just down the street was a little old lady past 70 years old. She wasn't no bigger than Norma, although Norma, she's a fighting machine. Everybody in this church, if, anyone, if anything ever goes down, we're putting together a security detail here at this church, but if anything ever goes down, I'm getting behind Norma. <laughs> you know? She's tough. Ain't that right, now? <laughs> I'm going to let her get me out of here. She's my security detail right there. You don't believe me? You just ask Shannon. Huh? <laughs> Elder Shannon's taken a few beatings in his life. <laughs> I'm only teasing you. That little old lady, he said, I would see her in the neighborhood. He said, I'd done everything. But there was something about that lady that just scared me. This little lady was saved and full of the Holy Ghost. She, he didn't know anything about none of that. He said, we'd be walking in the neighborhood. She'd walk by. And just walking by her, I'd just get this feeling. And I was just, I didn't know what to think of it. I didn't know what to make of it. He said, one day... I was in the house, and there was a knock on the door, and I went to the door, and I looked out the window, and it was her, and I said, oh, man, I don't want to open this door. He said, he said be quiet, be quiet. I don't want her to think I'm here. Be quiet. Just be still. And the little girl, his little girl, four or five years old, she, got, she just kept getting louder. He said, stop it. And he said, well, she knows I'm here, and she kept knocking. He tried to ignore her. She kept knocking. He tried to ignore her. She kept, he said, she just kept beating on that door. And I thought, what in the world does this old woman want? He said, I opened the door. And she said, he said, she looked at me. She said, I am saved and full of the Holy Ghost. And I'm praying for you. He said, you are? He, she said, yes, I am. You need God. Will you go to church with me? And he said, no, not interested. And she looked in and saw the little girl. And uh, she said, can I take your little girl to Sunday school? He said, I thought to myself, well, that's a free Sunday morning. I don't have to put up with my kid. So, yeah, take her to Sunday school. Every Sunday, the old lady knocked on the door. He said, I wouldn't even answer the door. I'd just say, she's here, go on. About two or three months in, the little girl got saved at church. I mean, Jesus came into her heart 
She went home and looked at her daddy and said, Daddy, you need to go to church. He said, don't you start this. No, Daddy, you need to go to church. You need to go to church, Daddy. Please go to church with me. Oh, Daddy, please. And just pester him. Pester him. You need to go to church. He said, every week, the old lady knocking on the door. I'd open the door. You going to come to church with me this week? Oh, Daddy, please go to church. You need to come to church. Daddy, please. I'm praying for you. He said, will you people stop it? He said, finally, I looked at them one day and said, I will go if you promise after I go, you'll both leave me alone. And the old woman said, I'm satisfied. Come on, this Sunday. He said, that Sunday rolled around. I have never been so nervous in all my life. He said, I've been in prison, been knifed, been shot, been in every kind of situation you can imagine. He said, I was so nervous. He said, I, I didn't know what to do. I laid out my tray of drugs. I said, I'll get these ready for when I get home. And he said, on the way to church, I, I burned through probably two packs of cigarettes. I smoked them two at a time. I just, he said, I didn't want, he, I rolled into that parking lot. And when I got out, the smoke just rolled out of my car. And he said, I went in. I thought, what in the world am I doing here? Don't know anything about this. Said about halfway back. And they sang. And he said, they preached. And he said, then the guy said something about coming up forward and kneeling down and praying and asking Jesus. He said, I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, I didn't get up. I didn't go forward. But sitting there in that pew about halfway back, he said, preacher, I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to put it in the words. But he said, something touched me. Something got a hold of me. And he said, it rolled over top of my head and down over my whole body. He said, the only way I could explain it, it was like hot melted butter that rolled over me. By the way, that is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And he said, that rolled across my body. And when I, when I left church that day and got home, I got my tray. And he said, there wasn't anything in me that wanted any of those drugs. I didn't want one of them. He said, I took the tray and put it in the toilet. I went through my house and got all the drugs that I had, and I flushed it all down. All the alcohol I had, and I flushed it all down. He said, I did away with every bit in my house. I looked at my wife, and I said, honey, from now on, we're going to go to church. I'm done with this life. I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to put it in the words. I've never experienced anything like it. All I know is something touched me in that church, and my life is forever changed. We're done with this life. A few weeks later, God called him to preach. He started preaching, went to Bible college. But he was a big-time dealer. He got rid of all the drugs. And he had a massive outstanding debt to the high up, to the boss, as he called him. He said, I said to my wife one day, you know what's going to happen. We can't pay this money. It was a, a lot of money. He said, we can't pay it. And what's going to happen is they're going to roll up in front of our business here someday. And they're going to take me to the warehouse. And they're going to kill me. You know how that is in that world. That's how it is. He said, they're going to kill me. One day, he said, a limousine pulled up in front of his business. He said, I looked at my wife and said, this is it. I'm going to heaven today. They're going to kill me back in the warehouse. I'll see you in heaven. I don't know that they'll kill you, but I know they're going to kill me. I can't pay this debt. A couple of men walked in, trench coats, and he said the boss was behind him. He looked at me and pointed and said, warehouse. We went to the warehouse. And he said, I turned around, looked at him, said, I know you're going to kill me. He said, when I looked at the boss, he was white as a ghost. And he looked at me and he said, man, what have you got into? He said, what do you mean, what have I got? He said, what are you, what are you messing with? What are you asking? You got into something. I don't know what's going on with you. You got into something. What's going on with you? He said, well, boss, here's what's happened. I went to church a while back, and I got saved. And God filled me with his spirit and set me free from this life. Amen. And now I'm preaching, and I'm in Bible college. And the man said, I don't know about all that. All I know is the other night I was laying in bed. I had been reviewing my books and saw the the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars you owe me for the drugs. And he said, I thought I'm going to get a hold of him and get the money or he's a dead man. And I went to bed. 
He said about two, three in the morning, I woke up and there was something. There was this being. I don't know. A man, there was something on top of me holding me down and I couldn't move a muscle. And that thing looked at me and said, Mike, forget that he ever lived. He owes you nothing. I'm going to release you out of this bed. You go wipe the book clean. If you don't, you'll never get out of this bed. He said, I've never been so scared. He said, you know I faced everything. I've never been so scared in all my life. He said, that thing let me up. I went over and tore the pages out of the book. And he said, he's not been back. And whatever you do, call him off. Don't send him back. I don't know who he is and where he's from. All I know is, as far as I'm concerned, you owe me nothing. I don't ever want to see you again. I don't want to ever hear from you again. As far as I'm concerned, you never live again. You hear me? I want to tell you, God can set you free. He can set you free from sin. He can set you free from debt. He can set you free from doubt and depression and worry and anxiety. God, through the anointing, can set you free. Bless his holy name. What are we going to do till he comes back? We're going to trust in the anointed one and his anointing in our life. Now listen, I don't know where you are in life. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you might have around your neck, what yoke or what burden may be weighing you down. But I do want you to know this morning that you can come. You can get out of your seat and come and kneel or stand right here. In the early service, the place was packed with people getting healed and helped and delivered and set free. And that same Jesus is here right now. And he'll, he'll deliver you right now. He'll set you free right now. He'll release the chains off your soul right now. I believe that. I know that. I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to invite you to come and present yourself to God and say, God, please, would your anointing set me free today? Everybody stand with me, please. Here's your altar call. It's a little different kind of altar call, but if you're here today and you say, I need, I need the yoke off of me, I need the burden off my shoulder, I need set free, I need help, whatever you need today, I invite you right now, this instant, to step out of your seat and come and stand or kneel right here. Come on, don't even hesitate. Allow the anointed Christ to do a work in your heart and in your life. Come on, right now. They're coming. They're coming. You join them. Step out. Come on. Don't even hesitate. Come to Christ. Allow him to work. Allow him to do a work in your life. Come on. Come on. Go ahead and sing. Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Bless God. Who else would come? I need God to work in my life. You say, I need God to work in my life. Blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Are you coming? Sing it again. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be God. How about you today? did you go to church? Did you join a church inspired by some preacher? Felt good about a book you read? Listened to a song and got a goosebump on your arm? No. Are you saved? If you died today, would you be in heaven or would you be in hell? Because really, that's all that matters. You hear me? I want us to bow our heads just a moment. Close your eyes before I let you go. I wonder if there's someone today would say, preacher, I do not know I'm saved. I don't know if I died today, I'd make it to heaven. God is dealing with my heart. I'm not right with him. I do not know that. 
Would you just lift your hand and say, will you pray for me that I'll find his saving grace before it's too late? I see that hand. Somebody else. Will you pray for me? I don't know that I'm saved. Slip it up quickly, reverently, quietly. Anybody else? I don't know. I see that. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. I need prayer. I don't know it. I don't have the assurance that I'm on my way to heaven. Slip it up. Anybody else? Just a moment longer. Father, I thank you and praise you for every person, the honesty of those that raise their hand. And I pray for them now. I pray that you'll continue to deal with their heart, that you'll draw them to the cross, that God, they'll see how much you love them. You love them enough that you gave your son and he died in their place. May this be the day that they go farther with it and say, Preacher, I don't want you to just pray for me. I want you to pray with me in Jesus' name. If you raise your hand, look at me. If you raise your hand, I pray for you. But I'm going to have her sing this again. I'd much rather pray with you. I invite you today, make this the day to be the best day of your life and start the new life that he has for you. I invite you to come, please, and meet me right here. Let me introduce you to the anointed, to Jesus. Are you coming? Don't even hesitate. Come on. This is just one more time. Sing them one more time. Praise God. that are finding and have found victory today, let them know they made the right choice. Will you do it? Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. May the grace and power and strength of our God go with you this week and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a wonderful Father's Day. God bless you. Sing us out the door, will you? Whatever you want to sing. Praise God. You're just... Come